Floors open up for questions, special services. Yes, please, the lady at the back. Could you tell us your name and whether you have any affiliation? Uh, uh, my, my name is Silva. Silva, yeah. Um, actually, I don't know the way to start, even though even I have a question or not. Um, but just to start from the last point, um, you may all know aware that the Sudanese government already they published a statement that they um, investigated the issue of um, chemical weapons and they concluded that it was unsubstantiated or unfounded. They you know, formulated their own investigation committee, as well as they did with the um, chemical waste. Um, they said it did not exist. Um, the same thing about the allegations of rape. They did their own committee, and they said well, allegations were unsubstantiated or not found it, not true. Um, I have to admit that since the issue of the chemical weapons raised, I've never been to any displacement camps. My last time was in January 2016, and nobody spoke to me about <coughs> chemical weapons. But to me, either with chemical weapons or without chemical weapons, people are dying since 2003, never stopped, even when the government and the Muslim party and all the international world are sitting in Doha around the table, even it was worse than before, it continued and it never stopped. And going back to uh, your comment, Mandy, that um, the, the issue of chemical weapons is not is spoken about nowadays because of the issue of Syria. I don't expect to, you know, because to my frustration and to everybody there, at least people that I met with them, um, they just lost hope because it became clear to them that not that the international community, they don't understand what is going on or that they, you know, we as Sudanese, you know, the, you know, here as well, that, you know, in the comfort of, you know, of the UK or the USA or wherever, not that we don't understand what is going on, but we think as international community that wherever the international interest lies, we would go there. Now with the cartoon process, you know, with the cartoon process, okay, Okay, I'll, I'll make it to the with, with the Khartoum process, I don't expect that anything, you know, at this moment of time is going to be raised because it is now in the best interest of most of the international community that they, sh they, they already shake hands. I said it in the House of Commons um, in, June, in June of the when, when um, there, there was gathering to basically to shed light, you know, although it started since 2014, you know, uh, we were gathered there just to see the information we were already known. Um, the international community shake hands with, with, with El Bashir, and now it is in the best interest of everybody that they keep him. So regardless of going on there, it is, it is, it is going to be under the carpet. Unfortunately, I don't want it to be frustrating, but this is the reality. And the people there in displacement camps, they do understand. They do understand that, you know, People don't care whether interests are not valid. Gansan, thanks very much for the uh, briefing. And uh, I believe, of course, that there are chemical weapons uh, being used in, in Sudan, in, in Yemen, Mali in particular. Uh, I believe this because the only way that the government can claim victory is to uh, use those chemical weapons because Yemen, Mali is a fork. A military fault. Nobody can reach it unless you use something before, uh, before the advance of the of the army. And this is a chemical weapons which caused the defeat. This is not only in Yemen, uh, uh, but also the certain areas in Nuwa Mountains which are difficult to access. So the government is amusing itself by denying that this because there is a sort of weakness in the report that is. The information has been collected by telephone. Uh, and and uh, so, uh, and, and because they, they, of course, stopped all the activists and so on and so forth. Uh, and and uh, concentrated also on the chemical weapons in order to uh, uh, sort of camouflage 
the other relations, uh, which, which I think this is one of the uh, weaknesses in the report, that the report is an annual report, uh, uh, Jonathan, and it, uh, it's a one-year report, which should, which, uh, there are a lot, a lot of violations which are enough to send this government to the ICC. I mean, I mean you don't need to any charts about chemical robots. So this, uh, in fact, camouflage the, the, the uh, other violations because the government is concentrated on, uh, on the chemical robots and uh, started to deny because of the evidence. They said, what they said is that collected by telephones. And, and, this, and they may have anybody from outside Sudan. I mean, Abdel uh, statement is not credible because he's outside Sudan. But if we could get names and, and details on the field, this could have defeated the government. Uh, so uh, why did you divide? The, why didn't you divide the report in two parts? Separate the chemical weapons because. Of, of the conventional violations. And uh, for, this is what all, I think, uh, for Maji, uh, it's also the, it's connected as well. What are we going to do in order to, um, uh, to, to, to uh, 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 convince the Sudan government and the international community to have an independent commission of inquiry? Because this is the only thing to prove that, that they have been, uh, it had been used, chemical weapons have been used. There are two difficulties, uh, Mary. The, the Security Council, I mean, if you go to the Security Council, uh, you have the Russians and the, the Chinese, they will be to this. And for the Council of Human Rights, also, we have a problem because of the African dictators, and the government, of course, is lobbying mm -hmm. amongst them. So, uh, why don't we work on both, fields? not choose this or that, but work on both fields, both of them, and concentrate on the previous reports of the special protests, and try to use the media, make a media campaign uh, uh, to, uh, this, the, the purpose of this campaign is to challenge the government, as well as the international community, uh, to prove that the report is wrong. I mean, we tell it you, if you think this report is wrong or have been collected from uh, outside Sudan or it's not true, we tell you the only thing to prove that you, you, the government claim is correct is that they accept an international independent uh, community. So what, what do you think the, the, <coughs> of the uh, approach uh, in this area? Yeah, okay, uh, Jonathan, are you able to did you, did you hear the question and are you able to respond? Yeah, I heard most of it. I think, I mean, I mean, this is the incredibly frustrating part, right? We have gathered what we believe to be uh, a large amount of extraordinarily credible evidence. Um, and, you know, in order to get the international community to take further steps, um, they are saying they need even more evidence. And in order to get that evidence, we need to get on the ground and uh, no one is allowed to go on the ground. I think that despite the problems with the Security Council, um, in general, it is really the only, it is the only way to move forward, so we have to keep trying. Um, you know, they are the ones who can authorize uh, changes to Unimid, they can authorize certain parts of investigations, and we don't have any other choice other uh, to work through them in most cases. Um, I think that with the allegations of chemical weapons, it's a little bit different because any country who is a party to the Chemical Weapons Convention can initiate the process of an investigation. So you don't have to be a, uh, a big nuclear power like the UK or the US or Russia. Um, any country uh, can request a, a clarification or request an inspection. So. That's why uh, well, I know what Waging Peace is trying to do and what Amnesty is trying to do is we're trying to put pressure on some other countries that are on the Security Council uh, to get them uh, to call for an investigation. Um, and I think that that is, is plausible that we will be able to convince someone else 
um, to maybe start that process. Of course, even if they call for an investigation, as, as, as we know, um, that does not mean that they will be given access and the government of Sudan will still have the opportunity to, to prevent uh, that investigation from going forward, but it will be uh, necessarily the first step that we need to, uh, that we need to focus on. Can we smuggle somebody from those agents <laughs> as a witness outside to that? I mean, if, if you yeah, I mean, the issue is with, there's a lot of security concerns. We actually have a lot more information that we, we, we haven't revealed in the report. We've revealed it in some of our private meetings, but, um, you know, the identities of the people who spoke to us, um, if they were known, uh, they would be put in a lot of risk. Um, so. You know, we can't reveal that. Uh, you, you might ask, yeah, why, why didn't people leave um, the area and come talk to us outside? Um, well, you know, that is, that is possible. Other groups have tried to do that in the past. I've met people outside about other investigations. There's many issues with that. One is that uh, leaving the parts of Jebel Mara where they are right now is extraordinarily difficult. Um, the places where the chemical weapons have allegedly been used are some of the most isolated parts. Uh, so getting them out of the country to other places would be very risky for them. And then the question is getting themselves back in could be risky if there seems to be talk to someone. And then, um, you know, Amnesty does not have the capacity as an organization to provide protection, permanent protection to witnesses. So everything that we do, we want to make sure that we don't put anyone else in trouble. Um, and so, yeah. Um, but hopefully, go, I think going forward, there will be other groups and other individuals, both uh, human rights activists and investigators inside Sudan, other journalists, other groups. Uh, I think this, this story will continue because as Abu Bakr said, you know, this is just the latest in a series of different uh, allegations of chemical weapons use at different times in different places in Sudan. Now, Amnesty is very fortunate that they have a lot of resources that we could spend thousands and thousands of dollars on cell phone bills and on satellite imagery and we had months and months of time to hire myself and my colleague to work full time that lots of other organizations don't have that luxury but um, you know I do think that others are going to take this forward and hopefully more more information will, will, will come out. Um, Thank you. Thanks. Thanks yeah. for that. Well, Maddie, would you like to ask your part of the question? Um, yeah, no, I mean, so your question was sort of about um, you know, whether the focus is right and what can we be doing. I should have said actually before, one of the kind of chief things we've been doing is trying to get, engage our UK representative to the OPCW, who I think is also the ambassador to the Netherlands, a guy called Sir Geoffrey. I'm going to get it wrong. I've forgotten his name, but I can always forward that on. And we did receive a response from him saying that he'd sort of raised these issues, but again, not in formal writing, which means that, you know, it doesn't effectively mean the same thing. I think that, um, I kind of said just briefly, but I think sometimes, um, you know, it's easy to kind of elevate this to the highest levels and think, oh, how can we be influencing the Security Council? How can we make the Human Rights Council dynamics different? Um, I tend to kind of sometimes think of it the, the other way and start small and start with what we, we do have influence over, which is hopefully the UK government, you know, we are you're a major constituency of the Sudan unit in the, the UK government of the Foreign Secretary. He should be listening to your views on these issues, as well as on the cartoon process and on UK-Sudan strategic dialogue. Um, so feeding in your views directly on that and to the OPCW, I mean, with all governments, you know, and especially the UK government, they're primarily kind of correspondence driven. So the volume they, of letters they receive on a particular issue kind of gives them their guide on how many resources they should be spending on that, how much attention and what, you know, the kind of view is of those, those groups. So I would kind of encourage individuals as well as groups to be making those direct approaches to the OPPCW representative um, and to the Sudan unit on these issues and on the cartoon process and um, UK Sudan strategic dialogue because I agree, I agree with all your points and I think we've um, now received quite um, not a, you know somebody admitting it necessarily but we, you know, I, I think it's quite clear that the UK government the recent lack of public statements and condemnation of some of the activity that's been happening throughout 2016 is in order to secure that kind of 
direct engagement and um, you know secure some of those concessions on migration and to some extent also the um, you know counterterrorism intelligence and extremist intelligence in the region. So you know I definitely think the lack of public outcry that there's been from the UK government and you know it's very clear to see that there's just not as much um, public activity that our foreign office is doing. I think making that point very clear to our foreign secretary and you know the Sudan unit which is the, the civil servants that run this is is really key and you know we'd always like to enlist people to help make that argument to them and just the volume of people saying the same thing I think will tell its own story. That's kind of a not very satisfying answer because I know we want to go big and say let's set up a commission of inquiry you know we need to push for that but making that point through the channels that we do have very immediately at our disposal is, is, is a really good first step I think and I don't think it's been done fully yet. I think that there's still a lot of work there to be done and then once that's done, you know, we work to the next challenge and think, you know, how can we influence the African group in the Human Rights Council and that's something I have a lot less expertise on but is definitely something that can come out of having laid that groundwork, I think, with the UK government. Thanks for that. Just a small clarification, maybe it would help everybody. A couple of things that came out of the report, mm -hmm. you know, regarding uh, OPCW. Mm -hmm. and you said there are members who have to sort of report, um, ask them to go and do a, um, a ground mm. uh, you know, report, which is really what is missing here. Mm. Uh, is there a threshold? Do you have to reach a certain number of countries? Because you mentioned also that yeah. there are five countries. Uh, can you tell us what those five countries have? Jonathan is very good on this, so maybe I'll hand right. over to him. But uh, my understanding of it is that any one country can request in writing clarification then there's a chance for Sudanese government to respond, then you request further clarification, Sudanese government responds, and then you can issue um, a call for something called a challenge inspection, which would be that kind of full fact-finding mission of OPCW registered um, scientists and reporters going in. Um, I think it has to be, it can be defeated, I think, a challenge inspection, and there is a threshold for that, but Jonathan will know that, and he will know all of the five countries better than I will. So, sorry, Jonathan, if you don't. Yeah, no, no, Maddie, you're 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 pretty much right on. Um, any country can request a challenge inspection um, under the convention. It's actually it's a recommendation that you request clarification first. It's considered the appropriate diplomatic path. Um, however, it's not a requirement. That has, happened, yeah? that has already happened, right? No, it has not happened in this case, and in no case ever, this is something we should emphasize, no one has ever requested a challenge inspection under the convention in the history of the convention. Now that may be because no one has used chemical weapons or no one has, you know, for a variety of different reasons. However, it just is to emphasize that this is considered a very large act. You know, it's considered something extraordinarily serious, and a country is likely only going to do it if they feel that there is really um, sufficient evidence to merit it. Now, I think there is in this case, but we haven't been able to convince anyone that that's the case uh, so far. Um, and just uh, what you're talking about in terms of shutting down a challenge inspection, um, yeah, it gets a little technical, but there's something called an executive committee um, for the OPCW. That executive committee is uh, consists of 40 countries, um, and uh, if, if a country calls for a challenge inspection, um, you can you can basically uh, cut that inspection off, but you need 75% approval from the executive committee. So let's say the UK calls for a challenge inspection, um, you would need at least 31 of the 40 countries to say that that's frivolous. Um, and all you would need is, is, is 10 of them to, to agree with you. So if there is a call for a challenge inspection, um, it's unlikely but not impossible that it would be quashed afterwards by the Executive Council. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any further questions? You can one point. Oh, okay, please go ahead. Uh, <coughs> first, uh, uh, Salwa Salamat. I, uh, your questions about, or your comments about uh, there is no, uh, of course, uh, terrorists happen in, uh, of course, use of chemical weapons in, in IDP camps. Yes, it no, is true. No, 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 I didn't mention that. I didn't say that. You didn't observe anything there. No, I, I didn't. Actually, I'm emphasizing that actually the government will do worse than that. You know, when the government is using chemical weapons or not, 
the Rus among people continuously dying. I'm not uh, I was actually challenging the government's findings. They yeah, yes, okay. From, I, I, I never said that. Uh, you know, uh, I expected uh, to be there. I yeah. expected to be there, but I said I did not witness because usually when I talk, I talk about okay, that. Okay. I would okay. depend on, rely on my own experience. Uh, all right, yes, I, I got the point. Uh, so I, I want to support your point in the sense that, uh, of course, government will do their own investigations and they will come out with a false reports and say that to say there is no chemical yeah, weapons is true. But, but, uh, yeah, but, but what is, uh, I want to say that <coughs> recently the chemical weapons being used in Jabarmara is that uh, because um, people in, let's say, in North Darfur, uh, as well as in West Darfur, mainly, uh, have been moved to uh, they just departed their uh, habitats, villages, and they are moving now in the, in the, in the IDP camps. In IDP camps, is usually is considered as if it's all because they are in suburb of towns or cities. So the government is not trying to to attack in that area. In Jabalmara, still people are living in their own habitat uh, villages. That's why the government is, is attacking Jabal Marra with this company these days. Uh, <coughs> the other thing is this, um, why the government is... Can some more questions? Yeah. If you can summarize it quickly. Yeah, uh, the other thing is this, um, I mean, uh, I think uh, one of the reasons that the government is just carrying on uh, with this uh, atrocity because the international community itself has failed to bring up the uh, 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 to, uh, uh, Al Bashir to ICC. Although since 2009 there was a warrant arrest, as well as in 2010 another two warrant of arrest, they failed just to bring them. So that is why I say this, this international community is nonsense. I can do whatever I can do. That is why they are just doing it. That is why I am I am I am thinking is that because now the case of Sudanese gives some fatigue. We as a Sudanese we have to become more active in order to help the other organizations to help us in this area to bring the the issue on the service. It is our our uh, objective. It is our our. Uh, I mean, obligations, uh, responsibility just to do that. That's what Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Can I very briefly on that? Yeah, welcome. Um, just sort of say that I think there also needs to be a lot of public messaging from Sudanese community in the UK and elsewhere about the ICC because at the moment we've got African states pulling out, notably South Africa, yeah. and it is to do with the re ruling on Bashir. It's kind of brought the ICC to its knees. Russia has now said it will never ratify. It's effectively pulled out. I haven't really seen that covered in the news here, which I thought was um, very weird, really. So I think there needs to be this strong counter argument saying, because you know you can always make the, the claim is always made that you know it's got an, an anti-African bias. I think there needs to be a strong Sudanese voice saying, well, there is a group of us that think it does have value and want it to be enforced. If you do feel that, you know, it's always up for debate as well. But you know, I think. That needs to be something. And just a date, I know you were saying media campaigns. A date, I think, for everyone's diary is that April next year is the 20th anniversary of the ratification of the Chemical Weapons Convention. So I think that's kind of a good date to be saying, you know, has it succeeded? Has it allowed um, some allegations to slip, you know, slip through our fingers? Is Sudan one of those? That would be a good hook as well. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, we need to give a uh, chance to someone else, so you'll come in, you'll come back later. So anyone who has, has a question ready? Yes, please. Thank you very much, Dr. Abbas. <coughs> I think uh, a point of interest is the Sudan government has not denied the fact that it possesses and stores chemical weapons. However, it denies the use of chemical weapons in Jebel uh, Mara and in other areas. Uh, the, the, the symptoms from, from using the, uh, the uh, chemical weapons 
are very varied and, uh, and uh, are very different. Some of them are transient, some of them they can have uh, lasting effects, some of them they can have devastating effects. This is why it's difficult in terms of uh, monitoring this time of investigation. Unless you do it in uh, uh, due time, sometimes you may lose uh, the argument. We commissioned uh, some medical experts, especially in the field of burns and in the fields of uh, skin lesion and so on. And they uh, confirmed that the likelihood the lesions are caused by chemical burden rather than anything. However, they could not confirm that unless obviously they physically examine the cases or have samples and so on and so on. Uh, uh, with regard to the uh, OPCW, uh, we as Sudanese uh, group, we, we launch uh, an appeal to, uh, to them uh, regarding the, the use of uh, chemical, chemical weapons uh, in the war with the medical evidence which we gathered and asked them to investigate that. Equally, uh, with regard to the, uh, the, the, the barrier of uh, industrial chemical um, nuclear waste in the northern part of Sudan, and these cases have been documented. And I think the, the, the encouraging thing is the, 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 the civil society organization within Sudan, and within Khartoum, they managed to put a lot of pressure, exert a lot of pressure on the government and on other agencies to investigate that. To the extent that the government yielded and commissioned uh, a committee to go to uh, Marawi, uh, near the, the, the newly constructed dam, to investigate the use of uh, burying the, 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 the nuclear uh, waste and the report has been known to some people although it hasn't been published. So I think the more we exert even from within the Sudan pressure on, on the government and so on, it, <coughs> it will leave, yield uh, uh, some success and so on. So I think it, your point, Mandy, is, is very important, is, 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 is try to, to, to to organize and try to, 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 to manipulate as many possible organizations to, to, to work on these areas, I think it is, it is, it is, it is, it is very important and so on. And uh, we can provide the information which we gather, either to the Amnesty or to World in Peace or whatever organization is working in that field uh, to, to work with us and so on. Uh, equally, the, 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 the the, the, the organized, the, there is an organization in, uh, in Vienna which is, uh, I think, responsible for the uh, nuclear monitoring. Uh, it can help regarding the use, uh, regarding the misuse or the burial of the nuclear waste which Bakker uh, 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 referred to. And they're willing to do that providing uh, they come from non political organization or uh, come from a government and so on. So again, this is an area which uh, could be explored and people can work on that. Thank you. Could, could you tell us your name and the organization that you present that has written to, um, you know, that has supported? Ahmed Abbas and prone to the Sudan Medical Union. Sudan, so it's the Sudan Medical Union, uh, Union that has made a request to uh, the organization for the It is a group of medical people, medical people who should we, we, we investigated the use of chemical problems in, 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 in Jebel Mara um, and we got interested in this so we gathered as many information as we can but obviously these are information are not from, the field, from within the field they are either published photographs or, uh, or other information which are in the media. Right. Thank you. Any more questions? Yes. Right. Um, my name is Alex Vernon and I'm from Sudo UK. Um, my question is for Jonathan. Um, it's only a short one um, and it's about sort of the conventional attack approach. Um, as part of this research, did you come across testimonies speaking of uh, militias affiliated with Abdul Wahid, any sort of human rights abuses affiliated with them? Hello, Jason. Uh, so I, I just heard the last question about Abdul Wahid. I apologize, I couldn't hear the previous question. So if you'd like me to answer that, someone's going to have to repeat it. But I can answer the last one now. Um, just about abuses by uh, Abdul Wahid, I would say that 
Throughout the history of the conflict, uh, people have documented significant abuses by armed opposition uh, members. Um, it, with respect to the past eight months in Jebel Mara, um, we, uh, we did not find any evidence of massive human rights violations by Abdul Wahid's group in terms of unlawful killings or sexual violence or the forced displacement. Um, there, you know, it is, it is questionable as to uh, wh whether to what extent Abdul Wahid's forces uh, embed in uh, some of the villages that were attacked. Um, the vast majority of the attacked villages had either no rebel presence at the time of the attack. Uh, many times rebels were present before, but they left um, uh, when the government came or the rebels in the government were fighting outside of the village. Um, so we, we haven't uh, found any evidence of of serious human rights violations by the rebels in the context of the attacks in Jebel Mara during the past 10 months. Uh, that said, you know, we, we would still recommend to the group that they, you know, remove their forces even further from uh, the, where the civilian population is hiding. Um, however, no, uh, we, we haven't found anything. Uh, any more questions? Yes. Yes, please. Your name? My name is and it's just a brief question for Jonathan or Mandy. I think you both know the answer. It's just a, few, a small explanation about the key coding. What is it and how is it useful? Because um, I came across um, like a project called key coding and for individuals to help them is to report. So I tried to register, but I couldn't go, go further. So just a brief um, explanation in class. Jonathan, it's an amnesty thing. I don't know if you want I to. Think the email okay, um, Maddie, I can hear you. Can you repeat the question for me? Sorry, I can't um, hear. Yeah, because we helped circulate your uh, decoding Darfur um, yeah. thing. So just a brief ex explanation of what that is, how it can help. I think was the, the nature of the question. Yeah. So um, a lot of Darfur, uh, as, as people in the audience, I'm sure know, um, there is no detailed map of. Um, of certain parts of Darfur. So for instance, for Jebel Mara, um, we, we essentially had to create our own map by getting people that we spoke to to identify where their village is and what the name was. And actually it was extraordinarily time consuming. I probably spent as much time making the map as I did uh, researching the report, and I'm not joking. Um, but um, what, what decoding Darfur is sort of along the same lines. Amnesty has, uh, but a, a little bit different. Um, it's more into identifying villages that have been attacked during the past few years. So um, after the report came out, or, or around the time, I'm not sure when, uh, Amnesty purchased a large amount of satellite imagery um, for uh, certain parts of Darfur. Um, so they, what they've asked, and it's, it's thousands and thousands of square kilometers, so, you know, uh, it would take uh, one or two amnesty researchers years to look through every uh, every uh, you know meter of this territory. So what they're what they're asking the coders to do is to uh, each person to look through a small amount of that territory and then to locate um, you know where villages or anything else, um, and then ultimately they're going to be able to compare uh, the before and after satellite image. And so that will help us to identify um, how many villages have been attacked and destroyed uh, during that time period. So you basically been, we give like a, a one or a five square kilometer area to look at and you would have to, um, and multiple people would be given the same area and then you'd have to decide if there were any changes to the environment to the villages um, that, that took place. And this will help us to identify attacks. Of course, it doesn't, it doesn't help to identify who, who attacked um, but that, that will have to be corroborated with, with testimony. But I think it is a, a really useful um, thing for, for people to do, and especially people who want to become more involved. It's something that can, that can really help uh, in our research and our advocacy. And it, it's also, I mean, just to say, kind of prove its, its use. I know that um, I've gone to events, uh, which makes me sound really fun, um, going to like open source mapathons is what they're called, where it's the exact same thing. Um, but they've done it, it had a very large part in the fast response in Sierra Leone to the Ebola crisis because they were able to find tiny roads and tiny villages that they 
previously might not have known about or would only you know have hearsay of they got people to kind of map those areas so it, it does have a real effect on the ground and I think for you know if humanitarian access was to be granted it would be really valuable for that as well just seeing what was what was there and I will say just for the historical record in Darfur it's extraordinarily valuable too even if it's not as useful for advocacy purposes although I think it's useful for both I mean, tragically, a lot of villages in Darfur has been destroyed, and, and there is no record of that uh, formally. Um, and so uh, th this goes so that we can have both a visual record and then ultimately a written one. Back to his point very quickly, because I didn't have a... Oh, yes. Well, I was just going to sort of say, um, I think the government did release a statement saying that they, they hadn't stockpiled as well, um, just to address that point really briefly. Um, I'm definitely really interested in, I think the UN agency you're talking about is IAEA, the International Atomic that's Energy right. Agency, yeah. 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 Um, that, that certainly sounds really interesting. Um, and I think something that we also need to be looking, you mentioned chemical weapons attacks in other areas, is looking at some other people who are now saying that they, ha they feel more confident to make credible claims, people like Dr. Tom Katina, in the Nuba Mountains has said that he has witnessed cases of that and obviously he is a, a medical doctor so he'll have a better basis of understanding for what you know he's got direct experience and is able to talk about that so I think if you're thinking about direct actions that people can take and witnesses that we can gather I think that's another route in. I just want to mention that briefly. Well, okay. there, is a, there is a medical evidence from within Sudan with regard to the burial of the nuclear and industrial waste but the, the increased incidence of cancers in these areas, the contamination of drinking water and running water, the contamination of the uh, agricultural stuff and so on. So there is a report, uh, or even more than a report, and I think I correct me, more than the report from our colleagues within Sudan saying that there is evidence of that. And also there is evidence from the northern part of the area, with skin lesions, with other evidence and even these non-organized non, 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 non NGOs in Sudan, they forced the government to actually to redig some of the waste which they have already buried and to try to, to transport them to elsewhere where the populations are less aware of the hazards and the dangers of the nuclear waste. So I think working within the, the, these organizations which are in Sudan, in Sudan would be very useful because this is an evidence from within, an evidence from, from the ground. Good, good. We'll move on. Any, any more questions, uh, please? Otherwise, I'll go back to some of the okay. questions here, sir. You, you want to yeah, I'm a bit uh, disappointed, actually, when uh, I'm here today because uh, I feel like uh, Sudanese uh, tragedy and uh, suffering uh, is reduced to questions or controversial questions actually to be proved or uh, disproved and uh, uh, another luxury question about the nuclear waste and environmental problem which uh, happening everywhere in the world and now we are going to prove is it happening in Sudan or not and if it happening then okay it's okay it's happening everywhere else so Sudan no, no, I'm, I'm not speak. It's not okay. Of course, it's not okay. Speak, but Sudanese suffering is much, much uh, bigger than uh, other parts of the world, than the environmental problem, which is connected with the uh, nuclear uh, waste and uh, radiation and so on. That is very bad. But what's happening in Sudan, uh, in addition to that, is much bigger. It's uh, not only human abuse. It's about, uh, it's about uh, uh, war crime. Crime about uh, crimes, uh, not crime, crimes, and crimes against uh, hum uh, humanity and uh, ethnic uh, cleansing, and all that. Now nobody forget, forget about it, and uh, we are listening here to Jonathan, who is trying to prove or disprove uh, uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, this uh, 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 how you call it uh, this uh, chemical weapon to appeal to the Western people who are very scared from this chemical name, name chemical weapons and remind me that the women who are run away from the mouse because you know for them it's not that big it's not when people are killed by conventional weapons because they sell weapons actually so Saudi Arabia 
to to uh, Western uh, these countries, to everybody else around the world, to African corrupted to African regimes, they sell them weapons and they put their money in the Western banks and invest it again, produce weapons, sell it back to them, and they kill their own people. And now just forget we can uh, focusing. Sorry. <laughs> Focusing, I, I'm emotional because actually I'm not involved. I'm not involved in politician. I come here once a month. I hear uh, things. Uh, you know, it's disappointing. Really, we are not moving forward. We are moving backward. We see Europe, America now is moving to, to the right, and, they, uh, and we are losing grounds. And this international is not uh, is not contributing to the progress of uh, people, uh, humanity, and. Uh, uh, and, and the suffering and the solutions of the problem in the African region, and all the time they give us reports, which is good. I have to pay a tribute to them uh, in that. But talking about their methodology, as Jonathan said, he has to include there what is further, what is going to be happen when, when you are talking, when uh, you, you have no access to the information, you have to give the benefit to the victims. I think your message, you your, message, your message is very clear. I think other people will come in as well. But all I can <laughs> say, what I can say regarding to your message is, like Madi said. Yeah, let me conclude. Let me conclude. If you want to stop me, uh, finish my time, yeah? Time, yeah? Go ahead. Is it time? Is it about time? No, okay, it's not about time, yeah? It's talking about Madi as well, yeah? It's, uh, uh, talk, uh, she talked about everything, but she didn't go into detail of hypocritical Khartoum process, which is sitting here and feel very shocked shock and insulted by these people who are leading that process in Khartoum, who are talking to the to the to the yeah, yeah, yeah to the people who are already accused in that all uh, horrific, horrific. Okay, wrap up yeah, so that other yeah, people yeah, can come. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All, all, all we yeah all, all we can say about this yeah. is is um, like Mali said before. All the reports of atrocities and wars and bombing are told to the media every day. They don't want to listen. Yeah. So, uh, please, the question of the chemical weapons and nuclear waste can move the barrier up a little bit because, uh, can I just mention, because chemical weapons are prohibited. So, um, if Sudan become truly indicted, they can give the resistance a momentum. They can have all the Sudanese. Sorry, sorry. I want to no, other people will come in now. Okay. Other thing, sorry, this sorry. What happened in Syria when they accused Obama himself? No, but they are not arguing now. And said they were using chemical weapons. Sure. They told them just to stop doing it. Just destroy your chemical weapons now. After we prove we are wasting not all our time, <coughs> but wasting our limited resources. We have all, all of us here sitting here. Even them, they have very limited resources in proving that. After proving it. They become Obama on the TV or uh, Theresa May or somebody and say you have to destroy it or we attack you. We'll like discuss during the break. They, but, but, they destroy it all the night or they don't care. Okay. Yeah. Regarding the nuclear waste as well, it's not true that it's happening all over the world. The Sudanese government is, uh, is, is, is putting nuclear waste next to where people are living. <laughs> That's an important thing for us to use as well. But let's other people come in, please. Any more questions? Uh, so what did you want to say? Thank you so much. I promise I will make it very short. Okay. Um, I do apologize that I couldn't put my uh, point across. <laughs> okay. yes, um, no worries. What I was trying to say that I was insulted that the government formed, rather than bringing independent body yeah. to investigate, they formed their own committee, whether they went to the region or not, and they produced a report to say that the allegation was not substantiated. The same way that I was insulted when they formed their own investigation committee around the rapes. Because I've been there, I met hundreds of women, and I know I, I got their own accounts. And I met families where they witnessed their elders drop in wells. They were ordered to carry their um, mother's children and their husband's bodies inside their houses, and they buried the house in front of them. I have been there, I know. And then the, the government for their own committee to say that just it is by opposition party, it is propaganda. So it, that's the point that um, I was trying to say that, you know, they, you. They, they are the criminals, they form their committees and they tell us lies that it doesn't exist. So uh, I hope I put my point yeah, across. Yes, thank, you. thank you. And by the way, I received, you know, as of, of most of you, uh, uh, I received photos from WhatsApp, WhatsApp, 
horrific photos I've never seen something like that in my life. Mm. I'm not a medical doctor, I'm an academic. But you know, I've never seen these kinds of injuries. If you, if you want, I can follow that to you. Yeah, yeah. you know? But I, I never met with them, with the families to tell me as that I, I met with the um, victim of rape. That's what I was trying to say. Thank, thank, you. thank you. And thank you for giving me another chance to clarify. So I think Mary wants to come back to you. On. Yeah, you have you to come back to me actually. Yeah. If you have time. Just to say, I mean, I think you you do raise a really important point in that there needs to be more unified messaging on Sudan sometimes. It feels like you can get a little bit lost in, in the woods amongst different issues. And um, certainly we even see replicated in the UK community kind of divisions within communities with, uh, you know, that represent certain groups and between them as well. So there needs to be a unified message and it does need to be about along the lines that you mentioned that there is this exclusionary <coughs> government that is creating all manner of problems and it's now being accepted by the West. The only reason I didn't talk about cartoon process um, is because I was asked to talk about chemical weapons today, but we've done a lot of work on cartoon process. It was the kind of focus of all of our advocacy really for the past year and will be for 2017 because kind of what I said before, UK government is what we can um, what we can influence realistically so we should be at first putting our energies there in my view but just also to say that to kind of counteract that thinking of you know it's either you, you know all or nothing you're kind of either talking about the big issues or you're kind of wasting your energies i think we underestimate sometimes how big the community is of people that care about sudan and the actual resources we do have at our disposal we have kind of people power more than anything we have the energies of so many dedicated individuals who can pick different issues to take <coughs> forward. You know, I've never been involved in this idea of the waste, um, the, the nuclear waste issue. Other people have taken that forward. We might champion a different issue. As long as we do all do that under that wider umbrella, that single, like, unified messaging, I think we can have an impact. Um, but, it, you know, I think they d it feeds in, you know, all of these little bits of evidence we can put forward feed into this wider narrative of exclusionary politics and the problems involved with that and the kind of genocidal policies being pursued. Uh, Jonathan, did you want to come in regarding these specific issues of that chemicals, chemical weapons and nuclear waste are peripheral issues? Yeah, I apologize, I didn't hear the question. I will say I don't know anything about nuclear waste. I didn't hear anything about it and I don't have anything to add on that. Okay, so yeah. uh, to, to, to leave the venue or to finish the meeting? To finish. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shall we let Hashi make a comment? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, from a uh, human rights perspective, I think Amnesty has done a lot. And uh, <coughs> I've been exposing all the, for not this year, but before that. Since 89, we've been exposing the violations uh, and uh, crimes done in Sudan. And we had an organization called Sudan Organization Against Torture. We worked together with Amnesty and other organizations. And in those days, it was easy to access the uh, information from Sudan, not like uh, the case we are in now, trying to prove or disprove. We used to have information from the field. Uh, and we have representatives in Sudan who issue us the information and we uh, dispatch it to other, other organizations. Uh, Abu Basha gave an example of this doctor. We, we need something like that. I mean, uh, some person in the field, no person, to give uh, uh, information or to, to give uh, uh, a witness or to, a witness to say this. We can't do that. Okay. 30 years, we can't do that. So We've done, we have, if, if it wasn't for the effort of Sudan Organization of Tosha, which I was a, a manager from time of it, we wouldn't have accused Sudan government 17 times in the, in the Commission of Human Rights before being a council. So the Sudan, Sudan government had been condemned, and there was a special reporter who gave all the information, the actual information, which are uh, corresponding to the information which we issue to it. And with our, our efforts with the Commission of Human Rights and the efforts of Amnesty and other organizations, 
we, we, we did a lot in exposing the government and exposing those violations and crimes. They mean crimes against the humanity and, and the, the genocide in Darfur wouldn't have been known to the Commission of Human have it been for the efforts of those organizations. I mean, be not doing a lot in, in 20 years of failing to, to do this have got certain circumstances. But at the end, we will succeed. And if we talk politically, this government will go. And we will overthrow it. But speaking about human rights, and as a human rights organization, and this meeting is but in particular on human rights, not politics. I mean, this is what I understand. I know why we shouldn't be talking politics in this uh, respect, in this special issue uh, in presented to the meeting. So I, I, I think we will think of another platform in which we can talk about uh, uh, other sources. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think you have to conclude because we've been given the time. But thank you everyone for turning up and remember maybe to read your emails and come back to us next month. Thank you very much.